Paramaze is a band I've pretty much recently gotten into. <clears throat> I did find them actually um, about a year ago, but with all the uh, new music I keep finding, I didn't really uh, put much into them. So I've only just recently um, been able to kind of just sit down and actually listen to it. Now, I don't know much about the band. I know they're from Denmark. They have um, seem to have had a difficult time, because if you look at um, how they've um, developed over the years, they've had, um, I think, three singers. Um, the singer for uh, this album, Contingent, is the second um, album he's uh, been on. And um, as for the rest of the band, they keep um, stopping. So uh, they started around 2001, I believe. Then um, a few years had a um, hiatus and then they got back together and then they had another hiatus and then got again back together. So they've kind of um, broke apart twice and come back together. And even though they've had three singers, they've also had a few other lineup changes as well. So... Um, Seems a bit rocky, but um, from this album, they do seem like a tight unit. Um, I believe it's a five-piece uh, band. You've got uh, the lead singer, you have a bass player, two guitarists, a drummer. You also have a keyboarder, so um, yeah, six members. Um, then if they do have a rhythm guitarist, uh, or if it's just the uh, lead guitarist. But I do believe there's two guitarists or six members. Um, and... From uh, what I've seen, it's said to be kind of progressive metal, power metal type of thing. And um, that is pretty much um, all I know. So getting into the first track, Land of Information, it's 5 minutes 38 seconds. The overall album clocks in at around 56 minutes. And the album is a concept. It does tell a story. I haven't really put much into the lyrics, but I do know the overall narrative is basically um, talking about society as it is kind of today and how uh, society is kind of um, a mess and uh, government's a mess and things and uh, the world is kind of in a bad state. And um, I don't know if they go off into the stars looking for um, a different um, prospect of uh, living and try again or something along them lines, but I do know uh, it is kind of about um how life and people are um just not really doing well so uh, that is the narrative of the album the concept now we're uh, back to uh, song land of confusion um it does um start with an intro so it doesn't have its own standalone intro that lasts too long so i do kind of like that it um starts um not really quiet it does um start with um a unique sound and um it's right up there um just um subtly not doing much you eventually get um a guitar lead which has um a very kind of weird key tone so it could be the keyboard or it could be the guitar it's quite hard to distinguish because these days a keyboard can sound like a guitar and a guitar same with a keyboard but um i believe it's a guitar and it has a very kind of as i say key tone to it but i do believe it is a guitar and it's a really um, unique tone, and I really like it. Um, it doesn't last overly long. Eventually, they just kind of cut it out, and then they get into kind of a very heavy, brash um, song. So just a high-energy first song. I wouldn't have minded that um, little kind of interlude from that guitar with that um, unique uh, tone to have kind of carried on and just kind of develop a few things instead of just kind of come in for a few seconds and then fade back out. And uh, that is basically it. So... Uh, that was a bit disappointing, but as the song kind of starts, um, it's all very heavy energy. Before the singer comes in, you get a key lead, and um, it's just a very kind of fast uh, kind of lead heading into uh, the uh, riff. Um, the guitar um, riff is um, basically um, just um, quite quickly uh, paced, but it's done in a galloping way, so it's just uh, kind of a gallop um, pick and then a bit of a pause and then gallops again with their speed. The singer um, doesn't have an overly high voice, it's not overly kind of deep either. It is more in line with, I would say, a deep voice, it's not one of these really bright high voices. He sounds alright for the verse, um, there's nothing special going on, like it's just kind of speed, kind of gallop um, stuff going on and then uh, the voice 
although it is good, isn't doing anything really spectacular to really stand out to me. Um, you don't really hear much in the way of keys. They kind of come in here and there, and they do sound nice when they are kind of in there, just to kind of open the sound up and just give it a bit more of a grand effect. But it's not really used enough to make the song actually feel grand, which is um, a problem. The chorus um, doesn't really change up the pace. It um, gets a different kind of tempo going, but it doesn't really go far out there and really change the contrast. It's just kind of following the same line, but the tempo shifts. And the only good part I can say about the chorus is when the lead singer actually starts um, doing high notes. And um, when he gets into that high re register, it just sounds like, okay, there's a lot more energy being put into this. And then near the end of the chorus, um, the keyboard actually becomes more of a um, front effect. Because of the high notes and then the second part having that key element, it makes the first part just even worse because, you know, the second part is so much better. And the second verse kind of goes again, then the, the uh, chorus comes back. Um, I think um, every time the chorus comes up, they add a few more keys into it to uh, make it um, bigger, which I don't mind. But again, the chorus wasn't good in, um, to really begin with, so it's not overly great. As far as solo goes, um, it's not overly um, showing off, it's not um, underperforming. Um, it starts with the guitar and it leads into keyboards and then it goes back to kind of the guitar and I think it finishes on the keys. Um, even though it um, is a solo between guitar and keyboard and uh, they keep changing between them, the change is actually kind of quick, therefore the solo actually doesn't last that long. And from what you get, it's a decent sounding solo, but it's nothing spectacular. It's nothing like Defecto's um, a Blaze solo, where it has that amazing build, and then when it gets in there, it's just soaring. It's just, you feel the emotion and everything. You don't really feel emotion in these solos. It's basically just like, it's one of these mid-tempo solos, which sounds all right, but it's not speaking to you. It's not doing anything. It's just... Yeah, he, they got talent, but again, nothing great. Not like Endlessly Falling by Defecto or um, Before the Veil, them solos that just are so beautiful and so well done. And they do show a lot of skill, but it has that amazing um, sound and feel to it. This is very kind of dry, just a show of um, musicianship and talent. And it's not overly shreddish, so it has the restraint, but it's not pushing the envelope. And that is the problem. Now, um, as I said, the uh, last chorus of uh, this song, it does get into um, a more key heavy chorus, which definitely kind of brings it up. But it doesn't really do enough to um, make an energy bold statement. So with the song kind of over, Land of Information, is a pretty good song. Like it's a very good metal track, but it does nothing to really kind of stand out from the crowd to show this is something that is quite epic and something quite amazing. It's basically just like out of all these metal acts, yeah, this is um above most, but it doesn't do enough to really get in with their them really high tier bands. So a good track, but again, it's quite stale. It doesn't have a lot of changes, a lot of different contrasts and uh, tonal shifts. It doesn't do a lot, and it doesn't have that much in the way of an epic feel to it. It's just a plain heavy track, which is quite disappointing. It has a unique tone and feel to it, to a degree, but they're not pushing it. And I can feel that they're kind of holding themselves back. And it's weird why. But let's get into the next track, which is uh, Kingdom of Solace. So Kingdom of Solace starts with um, kind of an orchestra and um, kind of uh, chimes going on. And it uh, sounds really, really uh, good. And then as the song uh, eventually kicks in, it's again one of them really hard-hitting uh, songs. Um... When the um, verse gets in, the vocals are a lot more improved over um, 
land of information. Um, it's just a lot more open, a lot more kind of cleaner done in land of information. It just was a very dry, basic, um, sing the lines kind of thing with no real effort. In the verse of this, because it's open and uh, there's so much more kind of emotion that I feel is he actually put in, his voice just sounds so much better and improved just like from land of information to this track he's actually gone through with a fair few vocal trainings to um kind of use his voice and project it in a better manner so um there's that but um yeah the verse is open and um quite brooding in a way but it has that kind of brightness aspect because of the keys and everything and this kind of sci-fi kind of uh tone that uh, goes on through this album um, the um, pre-chorus um, has um, a nice um, shift, uh, the chorus. Um, it has two um, lines of the uh, vocals. So you have uh, his main vocals, which he uh, says apart, and then uh, near the end of his uh, line, he'll um, come in again uh, just under that line and sing something else. And then that previous line that um, singer that finished comes back in over the top. So uh, the lead vocalist um, has kind of layers through the chorus. It's not a jumbled mess because, um, as I say, he kind of just starts um, a next line just as uh, he kind of ends the last one. So it's just over the um, end part and then under. But um, it's really, really open and um, everything. It um, sounds really nice, um, nothing... Um, huge um it's a good chorus and it's a good verse but there is better on the album but it's definitely a massive improvement over a land of information which was pretty basic um after the second chorus you get um keys you get um like fairy tale kind of bell chime things and um it's a good tonal shift and then you get the solo coming in which is uh just the guitarist not really doing anything and then it gets into the keys then when the guitarist comes back for the second time, he has this really kind of um, aggressive, um, shreddy kind of lead, which sounds uh, quite uh, quite good, actually. I really kind of uh, like uh, that uh, start to his second uh, solo. But then it quickly goes back to the keys, back to the guitar. And again, it's quite shifted quite quickly. It's like, why can't I get a longer key solo or a longer guitar solo? Why do you have to keep saying, I'll take two seconds, then you go to you? Because I'm not really getting great of one or the other. Um... The end part of the solo is um, mainly focused on the guitarist, where he actually does have a nice open part to himself. Um, definitely a lot more than the land of information. And uh, because it's more open and everything, I have more of an appreciation for it. Again, is it one of the best? No, it isn't. But it's definitely better than a lot of people that are out there. But it's not one of these guitarists you can still kind of go and say, this guy has a lot of feel, a lot of passion and everything. It's just he knows what he's doing. He has talent to back him up. And that is as far as that really goes. The Kingdom of Solace, um, as I say, the verse is um, nice and open. And it has a real nice kind of sci-fi tone to it. Uh, the tone they have through this album is really nice, really unique. Um, the voice is way improved. Um, the uh, vocal delivery on this song is really, really good. And then the chorus, um, that um, kind of um, high energy, um, well not high energy, higher note um, lines mixed with his very kind of open, brooding kind of uh, delivery. Quite a nice contrast there. So definitely a good track. Now we're going to have to get on to Star Men, which is bringing it back down again. So this song starts with um, just um, piano, it sounds really nice, uh, the piano, the keys, uh, whenever they take um, kind of uh, a lead aspect uh, through this album, it really um, heightens the uh, songs, it's really good, the keyboardist here. But um, as the rest of the band comes in, they just have such a mid-tempo pacing, as well as the vocalist when he comes in for the verse. And it's all just kind of going very kind of slowly, it's very bare bone basic tempo mid tempo pitch it's 
very, very kind of just nothing high energy, nothing kind of beautiful. It's just kind of going at a walking pace. That's what it feels like. It just kind of feels kind of like a drag. As the chorus comes in, um, unfortunately, it sounds very whiny and um, kind of cheesy because um, the lines, um, we're flying into outer space. It's just like, that's a little cheesy. And um, when he's um, like, uh, we're trying, it feels like I'm dying or something. But when he says trying, and I think it's dying, um, it just sounds so incredibly whiny. Um, it's just kind of irritating. The keys do give it kind of a magical kind of feel and everything to the sound, but just the, the tempo is just so slow and barebone basic, and there's not enough going on musically. You've got the nice keys, but as for the rest of the band and uh, vocals, there's nothing true brilliant and interesting going on it's disappointing the solo um is just a guitar now there is no keys um he's going for what seems like a kind of melodic kind of solo but um still have that bit of uh technicality kind of thrown in and uh, from time to time but as i've said um it's nothing that's that moving or feels like there's a lot of emotion. I just feel like it's a guy who's sat down and gone, okay, this is going to be a bit more melodic to go with a slower song. And then he just puts it out there without really kind of feeling and getting into the zone and the mood or anything. You know, just like if you were to program a machine, you need a slow song and a machine would do it. There's lacking emo emotion. It's done. It's there. It sounds like a melodic solo, but... It has no emotion to it. And that's the problem. So, yeah, we've had one pretty good track, which was Land of Information. Kingdom of Souls, which was actually uh, not bad, uh, pretty good. And Starman, which is pretty damn disappointing. Um, I do think if you um, gave the album a lot more listens, um, it would probably grow on you a bit more. I've only listened to this album um, just a few times. So um, I know it a little, but not as well as I would want to. But I want to get kind of a review out. So I think it will grow on you, but I still think my words will kind of rain true um, to a degree. You may be more accepting of it, but I do think the things I'm saying do have a point. So let's get into the next track of World Divided. This again starts with piano, sounding uh, very kind of uh, nice and mellow. Eventually you get a bit of orchestra put um, in there as it uh, progresses uh, further into the track. And then eventually you get the um, entire band uh, just with an explosion of um, power and everything uh, leading into the verse. And this verse sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, mostly thanks to, um, again, the kind of keys and then the vocal delivery. The vocals again just sound absolutely incredible it's weird that you can go from sounding just mediocre to absolutely unbelievable but um that's the case um <laughs> i don't know but uh that is the case um his vocal delivery here is uh, very well done and um the keys it's just like this one key press now and then just dun 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 now, that doesn't really sound like anything, but the kind of um, tone that he has, and then mixed with the vocals and then the rest of it, it actually just jumps out there and just screams just absolutely amazing. And this is what I like, just hearing that just dun, 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 that is one of the main reasons I really like this track, just that simple one press, now, 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 and that is it. It just sounds so amazing, and uh, the vocal um, delivery is uh, really nice. It has a nice flow to it. It's not dry, just bland. There is emotion to it. The pre-chorus, um, he just delivers it with so much um, power and feel and everything, uh, so the pre-chorus sounds absolutely awesome. The actual chorus, 
is quite high energy and definitely sounds quite cheerful and upbeat. Um, for a track called The World Divided, but it does sound a bit kind of uh, cheerful. It has that kind of uh, power and lift to it. Um, not one of the greatest choruses on the album, but it's uh, definitely serviceable, and they're uh, better than uh, others, like clearly Starman. So um, not a bad chorus, but uh, the verse is definitely uh, one of the greats of this track. The problem, though, with this being probably the best track so far that I've mentioned, you now have the problem is there's no bloody solo. What they put in place is basically what the bands do after the uh, second chorus. They just do a different um, kind of um, shift with uh, the band and the vocals, and then it just goes back to the chorus. Which, um, there's something different at least, so there is that, but I would like a solo, even though I don't think he's one of the greatest and there's not a lot of emotion he puts through. It's just, it opens the song up and gives it layers so even if it's not that great i would like that layer put in there and uh because he can play and i know he has talent and everything same with the keyboardist who hasn't even bothered it screams as i always say absolutely lazy and i hate it but even then even still very very good track sounds absolutely amazing it's really pleasing great tone and everything the keys sound Awesome, the vo vocal delivery, amazing, high energy, really uh, beautiful and amazing track. So next track is Nemesis. So this song basically starts right off the bat. There's no kind of intro, no key intro. It's just start um, quite dark sounding, still sci-fi effects, which uh, kind of uh, still gives it that uplifting feeling, but it's definitely a more kind of eerie feel um, for this uh, intro um, in the dark brooding kind of feel and then the verse comes in and the energy of this and the flow and the beat and um, you can just t tap your knee and it just sounds really good just the beat is really great the flow the uh sound the tone it's really amazing uh, the uh sound of this uh verse and again the vocal delivery amazing the keys amazing. He has um the vocals um has these high saws at points where he just takes it to a higher register, and it just breaks things up and it gives more energy to parts and it differentiates all these uh, different parts of the verse, and it's just a great flowing high energy um verse with such an amazing beat which is unbelievably catchy, and then when it opens up um so it's a decent pace but uh, when it opens up where the singer takes them higher um registers uh the band opens up and then you just get keys and kind of put in place of their uh, them um pauses of their guitars and drums and um it's just nice um the chorus um has emotion don't know why the solos can't do it but um this chorus definitely has emotion to it it sounds um just beautiful but sad because obviously i think that's kind of what it's going for it um it's a beautiful chorus but it sounds really kind of dark and uh like uh, they're trying to go for a depressing kind of feeling you don't feel depressed it's just that's the tone it has so um chorus sounds absolutely incredible um after the second chorus um you do get another change up it kind of goes a bit clean and um, the guitars are kind of clean, the drums eventually come in uh, quite heavy actually, they don't uh, stay clean, the drum just goes ballistic. And um, it's a great uh, differentiation, contrast shift and everything, which uh, the other songs haven't exactly done. So this is nice, then it goes back to the chorus and there's nothing after that. So what does that mean? It means there's no fucking solo, which again, I don't see why, I don't see how they can't do it, because it went so bloody clean, we could have had something really, really clean, and a real decent attempt at doing an emotional, heartfelt solo, but no, maybe he couldn't, because as I said, I haven't heard anything that has a lot of emotion, so maybe he did it, didn't do it for that reason, but 
again, it would have uh, given more to the song and more layers, but um, the second chorus is different. Um, it has a very fast pace. <laughs> um, this uh, really open, brooding sounding beautiful chorus actually gets very fast and heavy aggression with drums, but still sounds brooding and very open. But at the same time, the drum is going ballistically fast, therefore it also sounds really fast but slow. Which doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but uh, that's uh, what it does. And again, it's just nice to get a different um, sounding chorus so we haven't just got three of the same things. Because uh, three of the same, like, you've heard it three times already, so it gets a bit repetitive, so it is nice to give it a good old change there. So... Again, Nemesis, very good. The verse, the chorus, absolutely incredible. I like um, the uh, completely change in contrast with that uh, melody after the second chorus. But again, no solo, so that is slightly disappointing. But we're not doing bad. So we've had Kingdom of Solace, which was uh, pretty good, and then uh, A World Divided, really, really good. Nemesis, really, really good, just lacking a solo. Land of Information was all right. Starman, pretty disappointing. So overall, not bad. So uh, let's get into the next one, which is Contingent Part 1, The Campaign. So Contingent Part 1, The Campaign is just an interlude track that lasts a minute 42. It's just um, kind of a break in story or just giving the audience a break just to uh, get um, calm down and then get ready for uh, the next attack instead of just constantly being bombarded with heavy and then get kind of fed up of it. But... Um, 1 minute 42, um, what does it really do? Because some interludes um, go on for too long and don't do much. So all you really get here is you get, um, at the beginning, um, thunderous of drums. Um, it's not going crazy or anything. It's got uh, some pauses, it's just boom, boom. You know, the really big uh, drums. Uh, then piano comes in, you get a bit of a feminine kind of choir, and then a bit of an orchestra, and then near the end the sound just kind of... Um, the volume increases, um, everything kind of comes together a bit more to get a bit little frantic. But uh, other than that, not really a lot to it. So um, is it overly needed? I don't think so. I think it could work without this and just go into the next track. So... Yeah, not brilliant, and if you take this track out, um, what's the length? 46, that'll get you around 40, 55, uh, 54, so um, still long if you just take it out. You're not really missing anything, so if you want to, it doesn't really harm the uh, kind of, like, oh, I'm missing out and uh, the album doesn't last that long. It'll still last a pretty hefty amount of time, so you don't need to worry about that. So if you don't want to listen to it... Um, you still get a really long album with plenty of tracks for you to listen to. So um, let's just get into the next one, which is 22nd Century. So this may be one of the heaviest tracks, if not the heaviest. It just starts off amazingly uh, brutal, uh, very heavy. The verse, um, a little dry, but not like uh, Land of Information, which is just a very kind of simple metal um, verse that's very dry. Um, this does have a bit of um, emotion to it and things, but uh, not one of the most musical or epic, amazing uh, verses, but um, definitely um, a good uh, verse. Um, and the best parts of this is definitely the chorus and the pre-chorus. Um, with the pre-chorus, um, you get a bit more of an open sound that uh, kind of trails into them uh, really, really nice um, key leads. Um, which uh, just makes everything just sound uh, so much kind of nicer and brighter and uh, very nice. As for the chorus, um, it's all sung in a high register and um, because of that it's just such high energy, just a lot of fun, just so catchy, memorable and it sounds really good. It's definitely one of the best uh, choruses on the album, it's amazing. And uh, the solo, we're back at a solo now, thank God, um, starts with the keyboard. Um, pretty technical kind of uh, lead to uh, kick it off with. Um, sounds quite nice. Then we get the guitar, which uh, for the first time actually does feel like there's emotion to it. 
Again, it's nothing like what Defecto can do with um, Before the Veil or a Blaze or Endlessly Falling. It's not emotion to that level of just sheer emotion being delivered. It is something that has a bit of feel to it and a bit of emotion. But it's still a tad dry for me. But definitely an improvement. There's a fair bit to the solo, a fair bit there. Near the end of the solo, um, they repeat um, a certain pattern a fair bit, which uh, gets a little irritating, because I hate it when they do that. They just extend the solo by just repeating the same thing over and over and over again for about half a minute, and go look at that over an amazingly long solo. No, it's just very repetitive and lazy, and a cop-out, but if that's what you want. Um, but again, I'm not being mean, I'm just stating it the way it is. It is a good solo. It is um, probably the best. Uh, so far, definitely uh, one of the best uh, choruses. It is an amazing chorus. The energy and it's just so catchy and it sticks with you. Uh, just like um, um, World Divided, uh, that uh, key tone always stays in your head. Um, in that verse, this chorus stays in your head because of that high energy and their great vocal delivery. Um, so that is uh, it for this song. Let's get into the next one called Obsession. So this could potentially be my favourite track on the album. So, starting off, um, for a few seconds it's just like um, you're putting the needle on a record and it has that um, kind of sound that kind of crackles from it. So that's how the song kind of starts and then you just get um, the really kind of uh, dark brooding tone of the guitars in the background faded. And then as everything comes in, it gets a very different sound, which is very welcome because it is so different. It sounds like um, Miraf. So uh, that um, cultural kind of uh, theme that Miraf has in their music, or um, better known for uh, most people, is probably the band Camelot. They have that kind of uh, theme in that uh, kind of intro, which um definitely welcome and definitely um, something quite unique. So I definitely appreciate that. As for the verse, uh, that um, is kind of took out um, put, uh, to the side in the, for the meantime. But um, the verse is just absolutely incredible. It's one of these um, great tones, great vocal deliveries, the energy, and then the kind of um, gallops and kind of pauses in the courses for a few split seconds, just so it has that amazing beat to it, an amazing flow, and it sounds so absolutely incredible. This is the thing with uh, Pyre Maze, um, as far as uh, I personally go. Um, some things, it's just, yeah, as far as metal, it is really good. But then there's times where it's just like, this is absolutely amazing. And this intro and this verse, holy Christ, is it incredible. Um, the voice, the tone, uh, the play, the beat, it's just absolutely incredible. The pre-chorus, um, it opens up and there is a key lead which just sounds so, so beautiful and it's just so fairy tale like as it just kind of dances as it kind of um, sprinkles off away from um, the end of uh, the vocals. So the vocal end, it just fairy tale sprinkles um itself away um out of it just doing its own kind of really beautiful lead and then now uh, the singer comes back and then he goes again and then it gets even louder the keys and more um fairy tale as it just dances off and it just sounds so cool and then the uh, chorus um you could argue 20 second century might be better um or so, but uh, it's really, really open, and um, the vocal delivery and everything again, it's just really, really amazingly done. Very good chorus. As for um, again, when you uh, come out of that, it's basically the intro again, so you do get that kind of mirror up, excuse me, Camelot feel again being put back in. Again, appreciated definitely a completely uh, tonal shift. Um, but as far as the solo, again, the solo sounds like it has potential and it has a slight bit of emotion to it. Again, not overly, but it has it there. 
and you kind of get into it and it, it's nice but it doesn't last that long and god is it annoying because you kind of get into it it's just like oh this actually sounds like it's going to be a good solo and there's a bit of emotion to it so uh, let's just see what uh, he does with it and as you really kind of uh, get him kind of into it it's cut off and guitarists do this all the time where you actually start to get into it and when you just get into it they immediately cut you off I don't know why guitarists do this. It's the way I always feel when I kind of get into these short solos. It's just like, God, I'm getting really into this. Okay, let's go. And then it's just, the singer comes back. I'm like, oh, I'm just getting into that. Because you have to have the build-up and then with the build-up and then kind of getting into that kind of rhythm of what the solo is doing. And it's just like, yeah, this is great. But when you're getting into that, yeah, this is great, they just shut you off before you get into the amazing uh, thrill of it. So, disappointing uh, on that front, even though what you do get is pretty good. But um, overall, um, with everything else, uh, the song is absolutely amazing, absolutely incredible. Um, all the um, different elements and things, it's just unbelievable. Now, the next track is Contingent Part 2, The Hammer of Remnant, which obviously it's just like uh, the Contingent Part 1. Uh, just short kind of interlude uh, breaking things up oh wait a minute that um i skipped a track um so actually the next track is called air apparent so we'll talk about that first so for this track the intro um has a lot of keys um in the upfront so uh, they don't have the kind of times where they come out and then shine and then for the rest of the time, they're just kind of in the background and you don't really notice. Um, for this entire intro, the keys are present uh, through the whole thing. And it sounds quite nice. Um, a bit overly uh, fairy tale because um, it's so kind of up there in the tone he uh, uses. But um, again, it's something different, so it's welcomed. But as the verse kind of comes in, that's completely removed. And then it goes extremely kind of stale, which is kind of weird. And you got an intro which is sounding like one of these big kind of epic um beauty things and then you go to something which is bare bone bland which is kind of weird why they do that now um it's a kind of slow pace again not like um that uh, third track i mentioned um i forgot the name what was it it was a little bit of star men so it's not like Starman, it's not slow and extremely dry like that one. Um, it has more of a kind of upbeat to it, but it's not really overly there. So it's a bit dull. Is it a bad verse? No. Is it just a mere verse? Um, no, it is a good verse. It's just that I've heard better. And um, with the energy and amazing stuff you hear from Pyramids on the other tracks, when you get a verse kind of like this, um, which is just kind of good, but uh, definitely not on the same level as what you've heard. It definitely dampens it more than what it would do on um, an album that didn't have these amazing highs that um, other tracks have, if you get what I mean. Um, the pre-chorus sounds like it could do something uh, quite uh, magical because you've got um, them kind of keys coming back there, but uh, the vocals aren't doing anything and neither is the band, but uh, the keys are there to give it that kind of high epic effect but all the band it's just like they're digging their heels in and won't allow it which is kind of weird um as for the chorus again the chorus um it, it steps it up but it's not doing anything it's still very kind of like stuck in its ways the good part is actually the solo is actually pretty damn uh, um great um it starts with amazingly um high energy very 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 fast and um and then it's got in, going with into a bit of its uh, groove and everything. Then it's got a bit of speed again. And goes back to a bit of a groove. Um, again, I would still like to see a little more. But it's definitely um, an improvement over a lot of uh, the solos on the album. So it was really a well-delivered um, solo. So as far as solo is really good. But the rest of the song, it's just... It is good. But... Other tracks like Obsession, 22nd Century, Nemesis, um, A World Divided, Kingdom of Solace, um, there's a lot better. 
unfortunately, which um, make uh, apparent really kind of stand out like a sore thumb, which uh, is uh, kind of uh, bad. It's out of place, kind of. So, um, as I mentioned uh, before I talked about this track, uh, so the next one is now um, Contingent Part 2, The Hammer of um, Remnant, which is like uh, Contingent Part 1. So, as I was saying, a short interlude, um, you can still kind of cut it out. I feel like you don't exactly need it. Um, part two is probably a bit more than um, part one because um, now you've had a fair bit of it. So um, maybe um, here would be a good time to take a break because you've um, if you delete part one, you get a lot of uh, PMA. So it will kind of get, get, give you a step um, back and everything to uh, get ready for uh, the final three tracks. So uh, you could do that if you want, but again, if you delete it, and uh, as well as part one, if you uh, don't like these sort of things, um, the overall album 56, so uh, take one out that's around two minutes, around 54, another maybe two minutes. Uh, you're still up in the 50 minutes, so around 52, um, I'd probably say. So still a pretty long album, so it won't affect it. And you still get a fair amount of tracks. You get 11 uh, tracks, I believe. So if you want to do that, you're not losing out. You're not losing on time. You're not losing on tracks. It doesn't feel short. It will still feel like a full leaf fledged album. So you can do that if you please. So let's talk about the next track then, which is Under Restraint. So Under Restraint has um, a more kind of um, slow energy to it than uh, other tracks which are a lot more kind of energetic but um the verse even though it is um one of the kind of uh, slower energy um goes instead of uh, the higher energy it is still better than star men probably even better than the other uh, track which um had a slow verse um it sounds like it's got energy to it and uh, it's got a bit of evidence to it but it just falls a little flat so um it's not dry it has energy and feel to it it just doesn't go far enough to really feel like it has a lot of energy um the pre-chorus um is basically just there the band kind of opens its sound up and then the uh, lead thing is just there does kind of a high effect uh not really that much uh to the uh, pre-chorus the chorus is um, where it really shines. The chorus has an amazing uh, flow to it, um, for the first part at least, uh, because it's like uh, two uh, different layers of chorus. So the first part, um, it has great kind of flow to it. It just it has a great kind of flow to it. It really sounds great. The vocal pattern um over the music as it flows um it definitely has high and low ranges as it flows it's got an amazing flow to it um the second part of the chorus it just opens it up and lets everything breathe same with the vocals it just sounds big it's nice it's uh kind of calming because it's uh, just kind of relaxed then it goes back into that amazing um kind of um flow and everything with um kind of ranges and um great great chorus um after the second chorus we um do get um a different uh tonal shift everything goes melodic you get melodic singing and it sounds really nice um it is a nice sound and nicely done um the solo um in this track is very 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 good it actually um feels again like it actually has emotion not again to any high level but it definitely has emotion and it has great play to it and again one of the best solos maybe on the album but it is a bit short yet again so yeah under restraint uh what do i really leave it with well um the intro uh pretty basic but um not bad. The verse um, does sound very nice, but uh, we do have better verses on the album. Um, the chorus, absolutely fantastic. Solo, really good. Just a bit short. So it is a really good track. It just could be a bit better with that uh, better verse. If it had a better verse, 
Um, it would be an incredible track. But at the minute, it is a very good track. So the next track is The Ties That Won't Change, and I'm not going to talk much about this track because I don't really like it, so let's just get into it. So even though I don't want to say much about this track because I don't really like it, if I did like it and wanted to talk about it, there's not really that much to talk about. The song lasts 3 minutes 34, while most tracks are around the 5 minute mark, so it's definitely the shortest track, well, shortest for uh, actually being the band, well, two of them. Um, all this track is, is piano. And that is basically it for the whole three minutes, 34. You get a bit of orchestra there, I think, just a tad near the end, just to give it a bit more of an oomph and things. But it, it features a special guest. It doesn't say her name, so I haven't looked it up, so no idea who it is, but it's a female. Her voice, how is it? It is very good. It's uh, very beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's just piano and then a female voice for 3 minutes 34. It gets quite bland. Uh, there's no lift. There's no energy. There's nothing. It's just the same thing for 3 minutes 34. To me, it's kind of a pop thing. Um, but the male vocalist is in there. He uh, does uh, do some singing. And um, I do prefer the female just because um, a female's voice does go a lot better with a piano, unfortunately. I'll say in my opinion, someone may prefer um, a male um, and say males are better singing along with piano, but to me, I think the piano is best suited for a woman. So uh, she definitely uh, steals it uh, vocal wise. Uh, male obviously brings a bit of a contrast uh, difference, so it's nice to get them both, and then they both do come together. It's not the best, like um, Iron, uh, where uh, Elise Reed and uh, that vocalist um, uh, come together to harmonise with each other. That sounds incredible. These two, um, it it works, but it is not that good of picks as uh, them two in Iron. So um, they do sound a tad off, but it does w work enough to um, you know, be in the song. But that is it, it's 3 minutes 34 of piano and a female finger and a male finger, and that's kind of it, so. A bit boring, and I think if I were to have the album, I'd probably skip this a lot. <laughs> Unless I'm really in the mood to properly listen to the whole thing. If I have to be in the mood for that, if I'm not, I just think I'd skip it. Or maybe even delete it, I don't know. So, let's get into the last track, Symphony of Tears. So Symphony of Tears actually starts with the sound of Under Restraint's chorus. Now, it is different, it's not a blatant clone of uh, Under Restraint's chorus, but um, it you can definitely hear the chorus in uh, the uh, beginning of Symphony of Tears. It sounds exactly the same, just done slightly different. Um, but um, Eventually that kind of uh, comes out and then you just kind of get uh, the intro um, that uh, leads into um, the verse. Now the verse again has one of them uh, nice uh, kind of flows to it, uh, good vocals and uh, things. Um, you've got um, a few of them kind of key shines coming out from time to time which uh, makes everything sound bigger, more epic. Um, whenever the keys come uh, through as I've said it really improves because the tone he uses and he definitely knows when to kind of come out and shine and uh, whenever he does it always sounds amazing he's uh, really good um pre-chorus um not really much to it uh the pre-chorus uh not uh that much of a fan of uh, this pre-chorus um the actual chorus uh there is um a fair lot to it um the first part is uh Kind of completely different to the uh, second part. Um, and uh, the chorus goes on for a while, so you do get a big chunk of uh, the first part and a big chunk of the uh, second part. So um, I believe, uh, I don't know if it's the first part, which um, has uh, the really kind of, uh, actually I think it is, the first part um, has uh, a really nice run to it and uh, everything, and um, sounds high energy, then the second part just has a really nice uh, kind of flow to it and uh, beat. The uh, solo again, um, pretty good actually. Um, good show of speed and everything, and uh, some uh, 
nice bouncy lead. Again, it's still quite short. You don't, so we don't really get any kind of track that has a solo that lasts that long. I think we had the odd one where the solo actually lasted a fair decent time. So that is kind of it for uh, the overall album. So uh, yeah, Pyramid. I don't know if it's Pyramid or Pyramid. Um, so I don't know how to pronounce it, but I kind of say it's uh, Pyramid instead of Pyramid. If someone wants to correct me, go ahead. Um, I'm not bothered. Uh, but if I know, I know. Uh, so let's break this down. So Land of Information, the first opening track and for an opening track it has to really connect to me it has to really connect it has to get you all excited in the mood and everything you don't want the first track to just be meh because then you can just kind of shut it off and go to a different album which uh, actually hooks you on the outing and land of information um doesn't exactly hook you the way you'd want to be um but it does enough to keep you um, interested, just like, let's just see uh, where this can go. That is all Land of Information does. It's nothing where it's like, this sounds amazing, I want to hear the rest of what this band can do. It's just like, it, it's all right, so let's see if they can do better. Now, as far as the song goes, I should say, um, the verse is all right but a bit dry the chorus um is a nice chorus but it's not got any of that amazing energy of other choruses we have uh seen in uh, this album but um because everything is good it everything's good the solo um that's changed from uh, guitars to keys Again, no one has a big part to themselves. It's all split with just like two seconds of person, which I think is a little ridiculous. It's still good. So it is a good track. I would give it like a 7, 7.5. It's really well done and everything, and it is very good. But it's not amazing. It's not great. It's just really good. As for Kingdom of Solace, um, again, it's not a track which is one of the greatest, but it is definitely um, better than Land of Information. The verse is very nice. The uh, chorus is very nice. The solo is pretty good. So it is really good. I still don't think it's amazingly overly great. I can probably give uh, this track... Um, a higher 7, like 7.8 or something, it's close to great, but it doesn't hit that amazing mark that the other tracks do. As for Star Men, that was pretty disappointing for me. If I listen to the album more, um, I may uh, change my mind and it may be a bit more open, but it is quite slow, uh, the chorus can be quite whiny at times. So I do think, even with more listens and if the track does grow on me, I'll still have them issues. I'll just be a bit more expecting of them issues. So Land of Information could be 7 point something, as for Star Men, it's still good, so it would just be, you know, 7 or something, just flat out 7. A World Divided is where uh, I really get into the album, and that verse is absolutely amazing with them at uh, one key hit. And um, the pre-chorus is just an incredible pre-chorus. The actual chorus, um, not bad, good chorus, not one of the greatest though. Um, so amazing. Only problem is it doesn't have a solo. And then Nemesis, um, high energy, brooding, and um great verse. You got a really good chorus and everything, so everything's really good, but you don't have a solo. And then as for 22nd Century, um, that chorus is absolutely amazing. The verse, um, not um, amazing, but uh, definitely really good. Obsession, everything is uh, really good in Obsession, uh, kind of. So uh, everything's amazing apart from the solo, but there is a solo. It's just, a, it's just short, pretty short. Um, Air Apparent, um, 
a weird one as well because uh, you get them keys and everything, and I always say when the keys have their kind of standout parts and when they have the, the little trickles and things uh, throughout the song, it is just an amazing sound and it's amazing to hear. And Heir Apparent, he's definitely there a lot, but in verses, he's not there com- at all, and then the band aren't doing anything epic, they just go completely bland. So the song's pretty weird. Is it good? Yeah, because uh, the intros and then after the choruses, uh, the interludes are really, really good. And um, again, the chorus and the vocals and everything converse, they are fine. As for the solo, um, I forgot, but I believe it was um, a good solo. So still not bad, really good. Under Restraint... Um, Again, solo was uh, really good. Um, the chorus, um, amazing. The ties that won't change, just disappointing. And then Symphony of Tears was really good. So we've got um, a lot of amazing stuff in this um, album. Album. You've got songs which are just absolutely amazing and elements that are absolutely amazing. Then you've got other things which are just like, um, that's really good. And then you've got some things which are just like meh. Then you've got uh, the one track which is just, I'm not really interested. And then you have solos, which aren't there. The solos where it's just like, yeah, it was okay. The solos where it was like, that's really, really good, just a bit short. So it goes really all over the place. So putting a score on this, it is a great album. It is great. And I'd give it an 8.3 because it does go beyond great. It is a very special album because of the... uh, the sound and um, the skill they have and uh, how they deliver some of these things are just unbelievable and out of this world. It's just a shame that some things really actually does kind of hold it back because if it didn't, then their things were always the same as Obsession and they had um, a world divided, that verse, but had a chorus like 22nd Century or the chorus of Under Restraint put into a world divided, making that even more epic and things would just be absolutely amazing and I'd be rating this 9 to 10. But there is a fair few things that hold it back. There's a track I don't really like. Um, there's Starman, which is just all right. I'm not that bothered about it. Kingdom of Solace, it is really good. Um, Land of Information is an all right track. And then Air Apparent is all right. And then you've got others which are like, that's really good, to that is amazing. So it would be 8.3 is what I'm rating it. It's great. It's a bit better than great. But um, it doesn't get near to um, amazing or epic. It's just a really great album. What do they need more of? They need solos in every album. They need to open the solos out and make them last. You need to have more feel in the solos. Um, the keys were just there in the beginning doing solos. But if they can do solos, then have a big guitar solo and a big key solo. And um, don't make things dry. Um, have um, that beauty and the kind of power and energy always throughout. And the big, open, high energy stuff. And the beauty you can sometimes put in choruses and verses. Um, that's what you have to do. And I believe they actually do this. Because I think the album before Contingent, um, with the first the first album to uh, feature this uh, vocalist, I believe that album actually has what, what I have kind of asked for, which is a solo in every track, and a lot of high epic sounding energies on every track. And then, for some reason, Contingent, they just tried something new. And I think maybe it was them trying to tell a story. Maybe that kind of hindered them. Because uh, maybe the lyrical content couldn't do something beautiful or epic. It had to go along with the lyrics. So maybe if uh, the sound, the lyrics were something quite depressing and broody, it had to be dry. It couldn't be uplifting and bright. So that may have been it. But, um, yeah, they're my improvements. That's my score. And that is pretty much this album covered. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, then subscribe and stick with me and I will uh, maybe um, review the album uh, previous to this.
and I also review other albums. You can check my channel out. Uh, I have a few reviews up there. And um, yeah, if not, uh, then just uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>